have several announcements. Every doctor, every hospital, every nurse have been notified. Every woman in this country must be aware that it's most important that they check their medicine cabinet and that they do not take this drug. If you were an adult living in the 1960s, you probably would have heard about this incident. Everyone who lived during that period had to check their medicine cabinets after hearing this news because the medical world was experiencing one of the most horrific events in its history. In 1954 in Germany, a drug called thalidomide was developed as a painkiller, sleep aid, and anti-nausea medication. This drug, which was believed to be a cure for the problems of pregnant women, was soon introduced to the public. Not only pregnant women, but also many other people were attracted to this drug because it was advertised as a miracle drug and was very reliable. With effective marketing, thalidomide soon became one of the best-selling drugs. The company producing thalidomide was quite pleased because they were making extraordinary profits. They even distributed this drug for free to their employees, and the employees were using it with their families. Everything was going well until something unexpected happened. On New Year's Eve of 1956, a baby of one of the company's employees was born without ears. After this incident, babies with missing limbs began to be born one after another. Experts soon identified the cause of this abnormal situation. The drug thalidomide was causing irreversible damage to the fetuses in the wombs. Babies born to mothers who took the drug were either born with physical disabilities, miscarried, or died shortly after birth. About one and a half to two years after its use, abnormalities were observed in the babies born to these mothers. The drug was linked to these abnormalities, and in 1961, it was withdrawn from the market. However, the drug had been distributed to more than 40 countries, and it was not easy to recall all at once. The exact number of people affected by thalidomide worldwide was never truly known, but records show that more than 10,000 babies were born with disabilities. These babies are now in their 60s, and their lives changed due to a drug their mothers thought was safe. So, should we be afraid even of the drugs we believe are safe? Drugs might be the solution to our problems, but they might also bring about new issues. The thalidomide incident is a tragic reminder that medications need to be taken with caution. By the mid-20th century, 300 million thalidomide tablets, known by various names, were sold. It became one of the most commonly used drugs at the time due to its anti-nausea and sedative properties. Its widespread use increased the tragedy it caused. But why was it sold so much? It was believed to be very safe. However, every drug, even if it seems extremely safe, should be used after weighing its benefits against its risks. Thalidomide underwent many tests on mice before it was launched. In these tests, the amount of thalidomide given to mice was increased each time. No matter how much thalidomide was given, it never harmed the mice leading to its reputation as a very safe drug. But there was something overlooked, adequate data had not been collected for its use in pregnant women before its introduction. The structure of humans is very different from that of mice. Experiments conducted solely on mice are not sufficient. By only testing drugs on mice, it is naturally not possible to observe its effects on humans. The shortcomings in drug development conditions of that era and the flexibility in legal regulations also affected the situation. Nevertheless, could there have been negligence or malice in this disaster? The company that produced this drug, Taos Corporation, had a member in its thalidomide development team who was a Nazi criminal named Root Puen Brothers. This individual was directly involved in Hitler's chemical weapons development team. The same company denied employing a Nazi named Migros in the development of another drug, Targan, but emphasizes on its website that Ponrosu was never an employee. Thalidomide became a major disaster in history due to another reason, 
It could be given to patients without a prescription. It appeared so safe in mice that it was distributed without prescription. Blaming someone for this disaster without considering the conditions of that time would be a big mistake. There is a vast difference between medical advancements now and then. Since the 1960s, even though it has only been 60 seconds, it feels like hundreds of years have passed. Current drug research and development have much stricter controls and more resources. Back then, it was not believed that drugs could cross the placenta barrier and reach the fetus in the womb. This realization came too late, as it was already known that drugs taken by pregnant women could cross the placenta barrier and harm the fetus. A surprising fact learned over time was that depending on the day the pregnant women took the drug, the damage to the baby varied. For instance, if an expectant mother took thalidomide on the 21st day of her pregnancy, the baby's eyes would be damaged on the 22nd day, ears and face on the 24th day, arms on the 28th day, and so on. The drug could cause major anomalies, like the absence of limbs or eyes, depending on the day it was taken. In America, the Food and Drug Administration FDA, blocked the entry of thalidomide, thus preventing thousands of pregnant women from using this drug. The pharmaceutical company applied six times for entry, but each request was denied. A broader catastrophe was averted thanks to the decisive stance of the American doctor, Francis Oldham Kelsey. Dr. Kelsey, a pharmacologist working at the FDA during the time when the drug was introduced, and her team reviewed the drug but did not find it safe. Therefore, even though the company applied multiple times to get approval, they were always declined. As a result, the entry of thalidomide into America was banned. Dr. Kelsey and her team's professional stance was not in vain. The award, Distinguished Federal Civil Service, was given during the tenure of U.S. President John Kennedy. In the 1950s, when thalidomide emerged, drug controls and checks weren't well established, especially regarding use by pregnant women. However, thalidomide acted as an eye-opener in this respect. It might seem logical to assume that babies in America were unaffected since the drug wasn't approved there, but that's incorrect. Seventeen children died in the U.S. due to thalidomide. But how did this happen? The drug was initially introduced to the U.S. market without prescription requirements. Then, samples were distributed to doctors. Somehow, these samples ended up in the hands of pregnant women. Canada, America's neighbor, faced a different situation. Despite warnings, Canada allowed the drug's entry, overlooking data and scientific warnings, leading to uncontrolled usage by many due to insufficient controls. After the UK, where thalidomide sales were the highest, the situation was even more dire, with 349 recorded cases. The drug did not enter our country in those years, thus no thalidomide-related cases occurred here. Two scientists were mentioned in this context. One of them, a veterinarian named Surya Tassanaygun, who pointed out the inadequacy of the drug tests on animals. The other, a pharmacologist, Professor Sukruke Makalan, also highlighted its harmful effects. As a result, thalidomide wasn't used in Turkey. Thalidomide left devastation in the 1960s. What happened afterward? Were those responsible held accountable? Did the victims find justice? The drug manufacturing company apologized to the victims only 50 years later and had ignored the issue until then. An apology was insufficient for the victims who couldn't lead normal lives due to the drug. In addition, many lawsuits were filed against the pharmaceutical company, resulting in them being ordered to pay 110 million German marks in damages. Thalidomide, which impacted thousands of lives, is still in use today. It's even available in our country. Over the years, experts realized that thalidomide shouldn't have been so dangerous, so they modified its chemistry. Nowadays, 
This new thalidomide is used worldwide, even in Turkey. Thalidomide is categorized under the pregnancy category X, which means it's not recommended for use during pregnancy. The modified drug has been found beneficial for some health issues, including leprosy, some skin diseases, and certain cancers. Interestingly, in the 1960s, when the drug was banned, it was given to male leprosy patients in Israel to treat insomnia. They discovered it reduced leprosy lesions, thus it became a treatment for leprosy. The drug was approved for leprosy treatment in 1998. In conclusion, while the field of medicine continuously learns from its mistakes and strives to prevent negative outcomes, no drug is completely without side effects. The key is to minimize the risks and to always be cautious. Hello, dear viewers of Mysterious Discoveries. Today, we delved into a gripping chapter from the 1960s, the era of the thalidomide tragedy. For those of you who might not know, thalidomide was once prescribed as a sleeping pill and to counteract nausea in pregnant women. However, it led to over 10,000 birth defects. It was only through rigorous research and the commendable stance of individuals like Dr. Francis Kelsey that we understood the gravity of its effects. Dr. Kelsey's vigilance even earned her the Distinguished Federal Civil Service Award. This serves as a poignant reminder of the significance of drug safety and the need for relentless scrutiny in medical research. If you found this journey through medical history enlightening, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to drop your thoughts or any questions in the comments section below. And, if you haven't already, please subscribe to Mysterious Discoveries for more intriguing explorations. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay curious.